Welcome to the third video in this series of Azure PaaS security and our example here would be Azure SQL Server DB security and we are discussing the security from the network perspective of the network parameters security for Azure SQL DB. Uh, in the past two videos we discussed two uh, options. The first one was uh, the no connectivity at all option where the SQL DB is standalone by itself outside our VNets. The second one using the service endpoint and in this video we'll discuss the third option which is the private link so private link is a new service or a new feature in azure uh, in azure networking uh, just released less than a month ago i'm recording this video on uh, october 31st 2019 uh, up until this day the azure private link is a preview feature uh, in in limited regions not all the regions in azure they support private link until now um, and it's in public preview so anyone can try it uh, but there is no sla for this one until now uh, so i'm gonna speak about the private link but I'm, i want to revise our uh, architecture once more so in our architecture so far we have our hub vnet this one so in, in our hub VNet, we have a virtual machine, we have an Azure firewall. This VNet is linked to our on-prem using VPN here. Uh, and using we are doing side-to-side -side VPN using Azure uh, VNet Gateway. There is a peering connection between the hub and a spook network where there's another uh, virtual machine. And we have here Azure SQL DB. Before we try to have the uh, service endpoint and we saw the, the features that it provides us and the limitation that we are having, especially in the case of the uh, on-prem connectivity. And now let's speak about the private link. How can we have the private link here? Private link is done through two steps. The first step, you are creating a private link service inside your VNet. So inside here, that's a private link. It has a private IP, so it takes one of the IPs of your IP uh, address range inside your VNet. That means it will be treated like anything else inside your VNet. And then once you create the private link, you have the option to link it with something. This something doesn't have to be an Azure service. In our example, we'll use an Azure service we are, where we are linking the Azure SQL DB to this private link. That gives the Azure SQL DB the existence inside our vnet and we can treat it as if it's a, a virtual machine inside our vnet it can also be linked with other services uh, other than azure PaaS services it can be linked to a third party service if you are a service provider of any kind you have your own software and you provide it as a service in this case you can inject your software inside your customers um, private virtual networks uh, of course there is a workflow once you create the uh, private link there's a work workflow triggers so both parties the service provider and the consumers will be agreeing on this um, that's pretty much the intro what we will try to do in, in the coming demo is how to set up the private link and link it with other, our azure sql db In this demo, we'll see how to create a private link to our, uh, to our Azure SQL DB and we'll start by creating a private link. So I'm going to go and create and choose private, private link and you can see the service still in preview. It's created. And we have here the three different options, whether to connect it to an Azure resource or uh, create it with other or link it with other third-party uh, services we we'll start by the Azure resource so you choose the resource group where you are providing your private link the name of the link so say call DB the location sorry it's not in Canada I used to do Canada East US it's available in East US uh, for the moment, among other services as well. 
Uh, so you are connecting to a resource in your directory. You have the option as well to connect to another resource in a different directory by providing the, the resource ID. That means that will trigger a workflow uh, where the other party will have to approve your attempt to connect to them. So in this case, I'm going to connect to an Azure SQL. It's the type, the resource. You will see here we are linking to the server, the virtual server name and the subtype in some services we have subtypes so for example in uh, storage accounts you have a subtype where you are connecting only to the blob storage but in this case the subtype is just sql server then go to the configurations where do you want to have your uh, private link it's in, in our hub and i'll put in the the default uh, subnet now this will give you an IP, but you still need to have the service of the name resolution where <clears throat> that's where it comes the the private uh, DNS zone. So it can integrate with a private DNS zone. Then in this case, I'm going to create a new private DNS zone for uh, for my service. So I know uh, when I'm writing my server name, it will translate to, on, to the internal IP. If you would like to have your own DNS uh, service, whether it's like uh, coming from Windows Active Directory or other services you can use this one as well um, the next you'll choose to have tags if, if required and finally validating and creating the service now the private link is, is created uh, took a few seconds to be created and we actually we see we have two resources created here we have the uh, private link or private endpoint and we have as well the private DNS zone. Let's go and check the private endpoint, see the properties. So you will see here that there is a network interface simulated inside our virtual network, and it gives us the private IP from this inside virtual network. There is a link to the linked service. So what service this private link is linked to? It's the Azure SQL DB uh, virtual server. We have the rest of the properties that we know in any common properties in, in Azure, uh, including monitoring. So we see metrics here with some information, bytes in and bytes out, so we can monitor the traffic going in and out from this private link. We have as well here the private DNS zone. And what I did after I created the, pri the private link and the DNS zone, that I linked this DNS zone to my three networks. Let me remind you with the three networks that we are having here. We have one network for the hub, one for the spook and one to simulate the on-prem that is linked using VPN gateway. Uh, in this one, I link the three uh, networks to the same the private DNS zone, so I can see the three networks here. So in any machine, a network can translate uh, the name of the Azure SQL DB <clears throat> to the private IP. Uh, quick test for this we can go to the on-prem machine remember that this machine we couldn't do connection before from it using the service endpoint um, but now here when i execute my who is connected procedure i can see that i have many connections some of them are coming from the address space of the on-prem so this is the on-prem address space that i choose and we have here from the hub and we can see from the spoke as well. All these are private uh, IPs going to a private IP in the hub network. Now, let's check what we did for the Azure SQL DB itself. So I can go to the SQL DB from here, link it to it, and I wanna see the firewall. Because before I had if you remember in the previous video for the service endpoint, I had the service endpoint or the virtual network that has a service endpoint in uh, added here for my firewall to, be, to allow the connection. Right now, as you can see, I don't have anything enabled. I'm not allowing any Azure services. It's off. I don't have any IPs, uh, whether it's from on-prem or whatever. I don't have any virtual networks because this is treated as if it's in it lives inside a virtual network. In this case, my security posture is much, much easier than before. Um, I hope with these three videos, I covered as much as I can from the uh, 
uh, network security perspective of, of the Azure SQL DB. I want to do an extra video about the special cases where there is no private link in, in your region, but you still need to have the same experience of the private link. And I told you about the SSH tunneling. However, it's not a reliable um, method because in this case, you have a virtual machine that, that would be a weak link in your architecture. However, uh, if I get time, I will do this as one as well. Thank you for um, following up this, this series and please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.